Welcome back to MVM. Today, I'm going to get the chance once again to talk about one of my favorite games, and that is Terraforming Mars. Of course, today I'm actually talking about Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition, which is a little bit different. For those who don't know, Terraforming Mars is one of my favorite games of all time, and Ares Expedition came out and took a lot of what I loved about Terraforming Mars and put it in a smaller package with upgraded graphic design, some new rules, and a smaller playing area so you can get this game to the table a lot quicker it's easier to set up it's easier to play check out my review of that if you haven't done so already but there's more there's more areas expedition coming out i was lucky enough for stronghold to send me an early copy of the prototype for the modular expansions that are releasing later this year and i was able to get a look at them of course i wanted to immediately make this video and talk to you about those expansions as well because if you are as big of a fan of Ares Expedition as I am, then you're also dying to know what's coming out next. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's contained in those three modules. The world of Mars is in crisis. This morning, a comet collided with an asteroid, causing it to change trajectory and impact the planet. The seismic aftershocks destroyed much of the infrastructure supporting civilization, including factories in charge of creating the atmosphere, soil warming facilities, and all communications technology. Dust clouds still rise, traveling across the planet's surface and blocking out the sun. This disaster is catastrophic. Global temperatures are dropping and the water is freezing over. There is no time to evacuate. The only option is to work together to fix the situation. This is Ares Expedition Crisis. You will play as corporations just as you did in Ares Expedition. However, you must now work together to keep Mars habitable after this natural disaster. Every round, a new crisis card will be drawn and players will have to work together to achieve the goal in order to remove that crisis card from play. Every turn that a crisis card is not dealt with, it will lower one of the terraforming metrics and Mars will become completely uninhabitable. This expansion comes with a new crisis board, crisis tokens, detriment tokens, and 45 crisis cards that will dictate the crisis that you are trying to stop. In addition, there will be four new corporations that will help you fight off these crisis events. There will also be a new game board that displays all the information needed for this crisis game mode. Now you will be playing project cards like normal and you will still be drawing cards from a project card deck. However, this will be slightly modified. Before you start, you need to remove any cards that have temperature, oxygen, or ocean requirements. Because of the way that this cooperative variant works, you're not gonna be working towards terraforming Mars, you're going to be stopping it from becoming de-terraformed as these crisis events happen. Gameplay though is very similar to what you'd expect from regular terraforming Mars Ares Expedition with a new round structure, including the crisis step, which is where the meat of this new module comes into play. This step happens at the very beginning of each round. You're going to check the terraforming metrics to see if you will have any hindrances caused by those detriment tokens. As the metrics of terraforming Mars drop, you're going to be suffering more of these detriments over the course of the game, and your gameplay will get more restrictive and things will become harder to do forcing you to think your way out of the situation and try to get those metrics back up to have these detriment tokens removed from play. You will also resolve every crisis card that's already in play before drawing a new one. So if you let these crisis cards build up over time, you're going to be triggering a lot of different crises all at the same time before ever drawing a new crisis card because every round you will draw a new crisis card from the deck and add it into play. There's no limit to these number of crisis cards. So you could have a ton of crisis cards out if you are not doing a good job of cooperatively managing these crises. You're also going to be adding crisis tokens to every card equal to the amount shown on the card itself. Now, cards do not trigger the turn they arrive. So if you have some really uh, terrible crisis imminent, you have at least one turn to prepare for it. Now, when a new crisis card is revealed, you will resolve its immediate effect immediately, but its persistent effect will not trigger the turn it is in play. So you will have at least one round and you can see 
the makeup of a card here. That persistent effect is what's going to happen every round that it's in play, where that immediate effect is going to happen immediately when it happens. And of course, these are all negative. Now, you'll have a goal down at the bottom. The goal is going to tell you how to get rid of the crisis counters on there. And you're seeing that, that box with a number in it. That's how many you're going to start with. But if you can complete that goal, you get to remove a token. Of course, as soon as you remove all of the tokens from a card, that card is considered defeated and it goes away, leaving you with other possible cards that you have to deal with. Now you're going to have a dummy hand that sits off to the side that's going to make things a little bit more complicated. Before you play your cards, you're going to reveal a card from the dummy hand. That card that's revealed is going to be a card that no one can play. So this is basically going to restrict you. You're not going to be able to have every phase every turn because you don't know what's going to happen when you reveal that dummy card. However, you are going to go through the dummy player's entire deck before you start reshuffling those. So you will at least have some idea of what's left because you don't want to be limited. You want to try to take your actions when you can, knowing that eventually some of these actions are going to be prevented. Now, you might remember that victory points is a, an important concept of Terraform Mars Ares Expedition. You can still earn victory points in Crisis. What's going to happen is every victory point token that you play is going to be set aside in a victory point pool. These tokens can be used in two ways. For one, they can be used to pay for any cards that have a negative victory point cost. So if you're playing a card with a negative VP, you have to pay tokens in order to play the card. However, you can also spend these victory point forest tokens to remove crisis tokens from a card. It's going to cost two victory points for every token. However, this is a good way to get rid of these crisis cards. If you can't meet the goal, you can simply use two victory points and remove those tokens instead, allowing you to dwindle down that stack of crisis cards that are out. Now, the game is going to be played in similar fashion to Ares Expedition with rounds going around the table until one of the following things happens. If the Dwindling Supplies Crisis card comes out, which is one of the cards at the bottom of the deck, and all three terraforming metrics are completed, then you win. However, if the three terraforming metrics ever drop to purple during the end of the phase, you will lose. If you're forced to decrease either temperature or oxygen and you can't do it anymore, you lose. If you have to flip an ocean face down and all of them are already face down, you lose. And if you would draw a crisis card but the deck is empty, again, you lose. So there are a lot of different things that you're fighting against here and only really one way to win, which is to survive with all three terraforming metrics completed when that supplies card is drawn and if this isn't enough for you there are two more added difficulties you could do an expert or a nightmare difficulty to make this mode harder and of course this mode can be played solo as well aries expedition discovery adds four new mechanics to the base game awards milestones wild tags and upgraded phase cards. Now these awards and milestones are gonna work very similar to how they worked in Terraforming Mars. You're gonna have wild tags, which allow you to use them as any kind of tag once they're in play. And these upgraded phase cards give you bigger bonuses, allowing you to get more done every turn. So you're gonna see those upgraded phase cards here. And you'll see the word upgraded there on the side next to the phase number. So you know which one you're using course this mode is also going to introduce new project cards and new corporation cards in addition to the meat of the game which are those award tiles and milestone tiles now you're only going to use three award tiles every game and three milestone tiles the rest of them are not going to be used so you're going to have a different game every time you play with some different awards needed this is akin to using some of the different maps with terraforming mars because they do give you different goals so they're kind of replicating that here with Ares Expedition. So you will take those upgraded phase cards, the ones that have that upgrade on them, and you'll set them aside. Over the course of the game, you're going to be able to upgrade your way to the better version of the card. These upgraded cards are basically the same, but with just better bonuses. Now there are two different versions of every card that you can upgrade into. The project card and corp card affects how you upgrade that phase card. Basically, to upgrade a card, you'll just choose one of the two phase cards and then replace that corresponding phase card in your hand. If you had chosen that phase this round, you can still do it, you just place it face up. 
Now, if the phase has already happened, you don't get the phase bonus, but if it hasn't, you will still get the bonus. Now, anytime you resolve an upgrade phase card effect, you can choose to upgrade any version, and you can even choose to change the version of a card you upgraded into. So if you don't like one of those versions, it turns out it's not working for your strategy, you can switch it to the other version of that card. Now, milestones and awards do work kind of similarly to how they worked in Terraforming Mars, but you don't have to fund them. So to get a milestone, you just have to be the first player to achieve that goal. You just take that milestone tile and each milestone tile is worth three victory points at the end of the game. Awards are similar. However, awards do give points to the person that has the most and the second most of each thing. You don't actually take these, so everyone is viable for an award and the awards don't score till the end of the game. So if you see here at the end of the game, the player that has the most heat production is gonna get five victory points. Now, these milestones, awards, and upgraded cards can be mixed and matched with any of the other modules, and they can be used with some of the variants like drafting as well, or in two-player games, you can use a dummy hand with some of these uh, cards as well. So this is just going to infuse some new energy into your Ares Expedition games, giving you a little bit more to do, some goals to go after, and also a stronger way to play the cards that you wanted to play originally. Foundations is the third Ares Expedition module. What happens after you've made the planet livable? What happens to the air you breathe, the crops you grow? These things are important, but they are not all that's required to make a planet your home. You will need to build up Mars beyond just the regular metrics to include a fourth terraforming metric called infrastructure. This is going to be a new aspect of the game that you have to improve as you're building out Mars. There are new project cards that involve infrastructure. And as you can see here, this expansion is also going to come with two more player boards, allowing you to play Ares Expedition with up to six players. This expansion also adds a larger score track and that infrastructure track that you see here. So you can set that supplemental scoreboard to the side and use it to track your score and see it a little bit easier. Of course, you're also going to get new project cards added into this game that involve infrastructure. And you're gonna see those cubes here. These are the cubes that are going to track that infrastructure. And you're gonna be using that infrastructure track at the top to kind of determine how well you are building out the infrastructure of Mars. So setup is pretty similar to the base game, except you're gonna slot in these new tracks and you can see here how they kind of are designed to fit in with the scoreboard already to kind of expand that out. Now you're going to have some new cards that are added into the deck for a five and six player game. However, if you're not playing with five and six players, you won't use these cards. They're just giving you more cards so that you can cycle through with more players. Now infrastructure starts at 0% like you'd expect and your goal is to try to get it all the way to the top. Now there are new project cards, of course, that will increase the infrastructure. However, there are two new standard projects that you can do to increase the infrastructure on your own. You can spend 15 mega credits to increase the infrastructure one step, or you can spend five heat and three plants to increase the infrastructure one step. Just like any other metric, when you increase infrastructure, you do still get one terraforming rating, but you also get to draw a card. So that's a little bit more motivation and another way to draw cards if you're stumbling a little bit in the game and need to draw more cards. This expansion also introduces a new phase. This is phase six, the rest phase. Basically, this phase is a pass. You don't do anything this phase. However, you get to draw a card. So you'll see here that this game module is giving you new ways to draw cards, which is something that people have been asking for, different strategies to kind of flush out your hand and get new cards. Now, the game plays again, just like Ares Expedition with these new goals. So the end of the game is only going to occur when all four metrics are completed. So you have to max out your infrastructure as well in order to win the game with this module. So there you have it, all three Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition modules. Thank you so much for watching this video today and letting me share some of my excitement for this game with you. Hopefully you're just as pumped for these three new modules as I am. I can't wait for them to come out and to spice up my Terraforming Mars gameplay. So let me know in the comments below which module you're most excited about. And as always, thank you for liking, subscribing, and following us here at MVM. And until I see you again, keep having fun at the table.
congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.